so unbelievably luxurious. And the ganache filling is just velvety. And those like little flecks of flaky sea salt, they just pop in your mouth at just the right time. And the chocolate tart is like the perfect container for all of that deliciousness. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Valerie and today we're going to be making a chocolate and caramel tart in a chocolate crust and it is rich and crumbly. It is legit one of my all time favorites and I don't even like chocolate that much. This is another one of recipes that we made on the finale of The Great American Baking Show and it helped me notch that win and I loved it so much I knew I had to come home and create my own version of this recipe. So it starts with a chocolate tart crust. And I think they did that to probably like trick us because it's hard to tell when a chocolate tart crust has actually finished baking. So I'm gonna give you guys the tips on how to get a good bake on that chocolate tart crust. And that's the first step that we're gonna do in making this recipe. To start our crust, I've got a bowl of my all-purpose flour and I'm gonna sift in my cocoa powder. And the reason I'm gonna sift it is because cocoa powder, like powdered sugar, has a tendency to clump. So by sifting it, we're making sure we don't have any of those little clumps and we'll have a really nice, smooth pie crust. I've got some salt and I'm just gonna whisk this together. And that's our dry ingredients. I've got my stand mixer, which is gonna help us out today. If you don't have a stand mixer, you could totally use a large bowl or you could use an electric hand mixer for this recipe. It's totally fine. You can get it done without one of these. Let me just make sure I'm doing this in the right order. First, we're gonna cream our butter and sugar together. So in a lot of recipes, you're probably thinking about creaming butter and sugar together with granulated sugar. In this recipe, we're using powdered sugar. We're actually going to skip sifting this because we're gonna be doing so much whipping because this is gonna go for four to five minutes. We want it to be really nice and well creamed together. Start low and increase a little. I want this to mix on medium low for four to five minutes until it's nice and combined and it's pale and fluffy. Our powdered sugar and butter is super pale and fluffy and creamed together. I'm gonna add an egg and I'm gonna let that go on medium low for just a couple of minutes, like two. And if the mixture is looking separated at this point, don't worry, as it mixes, it'll come together more. And once we add that flour, that will also help bring it together if it's looking separated. I'm gonna go ahead and add my dry ingredients. And I'm just gonna mix this on low because once it starts to form that dough, I'm gonna stop my mixer. I don't wanna overmix at that point. So at this point, you can mound it into a disc and let it set in the refrigerator before you roll it out. And what letting it set in the refrigerator would do, it gives the flour a chance to hydrate, it gives the butter a chance to firm up. I'm just gonna set this in the refrigerator while I get prepared to roll it out. So I have my two sheets of parchment paper ready. I also use wax paper. I've got my rolling pin and I've got my tart pan which is just gonna guide me about how large I need to roll my circle of dough, because this is enough for one tart crust. So the reason I'm using two sheets of parchment is because my dough, it didn't rest very long, so it's still very soft. So I've got my two sheets, and if you want, you can add a little bit of flour just to keep them from sticking, not too much. Don't want it to stick to my parchment paper as I roll it out. And like I said, because this dough didn't really rest in the fridge, the softened butter that we used to bring it together so nicely, it's still quite soft, which makes this super easy to roll out. I'm just gonna roll this out into a circle. I just, I'm just gonna keep continuing to turn and just kind of start in the center and roll out. All right, we're close, it just needs to be a little bit wider because we want it to be a little bit wider than our tart pan because the dough is gonna have to climb up the sides of the tart pan. For this recipe, between one quarter and one eighth is gonna work for you. So I finished the crust, I rolled it out, I think it's just the right size. I'm actually going to flip this on top of my tart pan. How to 
my dress. I peeled a layer off, and now I'm going to flip this on top of my tart pan. And if it gets too soft at any time, you can just go ahead and set it in the fridge for a few minutes. And I'm just going to kind of let it relax into the tart pan. This is quite soft, but it's okay. You don't want to stretch and pull. You want to let the dough relax into the space. And by doing that, it's not going to shrink up and be frightened when you put it in the oven. And like I said, if at this point, if your dough is too soft, you can just stick it in the fridge in the parchment paper for like five minutes. It's going to take my rolling pin and clean the edges. I'm gonna refrigerate this for half an hour. And again, it's just giving our gluten a chance to relax. So once we bake it, the dough won't shrink up and end up being really small. Or if at this point you wanna leave it in the fridge a little bit longer, cause you're doing this while doing other things, which is a great idea. You can leave it in the fridge for up to three days or you could freeze it. My tart crust was in the refrigerator for 35 minutes. My oven is already preheated to 375. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to prepare to completely blind bake this crust. And we're blind baking it because once we put our filling in, we're not putting it back in the oven. So we want our crust completely baked before we do that. So I'm just gonna kind of prick the crust all over with a fork. By pricking it, we are giving the air somewhere to escape. And another thing that we're gonna do to keep that crust from rising up is we're gonna weigh it down. Add a piece of parchment paper and you can use dried beans, you can use pie weights, whatever you have that's gonna help you weigh down that tart crust. I'm gonna bake this for about 12 to 15 minutes. And again, this is chocolate, so it's tricky because it's not gonna brown. But what we want is that crust to start to dry. So if you kind of pick up that parchment paper, take a peek and touch it, it should feel like it's starting to dry out. And once you get to that point, we're gonna remove the pie weights and bake it for an additional six to eight minutes until it's completely cooked. And you'll know that it's completely cooked because it's gonna smell like a chocolate cookie. It's going to look dried out. So use your eyes, look for that visual cue. We're making a creamy caramel. So we're gonna start with the sugar, water, when you add the water, you don't want it to like splash all over the saucepan. So just, you know, take care when pouring it. We've got corn syrup. And corn syrup, it's kind of like your best friend when you're making caramel because it allows you to cook it with a much lower chance of it burning. And if you don't want to use corn syrup, you can use honey. Kind of give it a little swirl so that my sugar is all moistened. Making caramel requires patience. You don't want to be stirring or whisking and agitating it. If you did have sugar splash up along the sides of your saucepan, you can wet a pastry brush to kind of dissolve those sugar crystals because you might run the risk of having that sugar crystallize and cause a chain reaction and everything in your pot crystallizes. Don't worry too much about that, but leave the saucepan alone, you're gonna notice, you can watch and you should watch, because with caramel, it will go from not done to burnt in literally seconds. But what you're looking for is for what's in that pot to start taking on color. It'll start along the edges. And once it does that, you can give it some gentle swirls just so that it's cooking evenly, not to mix it up. I've set my timer for eight minutes and then I'm gonna come back and take a closer look because we should be very close by then. This normally takes me nine to 12 minutes total to get the color of caramel that I'm looking for. It's just starting to brown, which means it's going to brown and finish quickly, but it always looks darker in the saucepan than it actually is. So a test I like to do is just spoon a little caramel onto a white plate so that you can see the actual color. So in the pan, it looks a lot darker. On the plate, it's very, very blonde still. So we're gonna let that keep cooking. We probably have another one, two minutes to go. It's getting the color of like a caramel chew, which is the color we want. Definitely, I like the color that we're at, so I'm going to go ahead, add my cream with one hand and a whisk in the other. And I'm actually gonna put an oven mitt on to protect my hand from the sputtering. Just. So we have this really beautiful and dark 
caramel, which for this recipe actually works really beautifully because when we add all of that rich chocolate, this caramel, it's gonna add so much flavor. I'm gonna add some butter. Make sure you cut your butter into pieces so that it will melt more easily. And that residual heat from the hot caramel is just gonna melt that. And I'm also gonna stir in a little bit of salt. And as the caramel sits and comes to room temperature, it's going to thicken. And we want this to be thick. So I'm gonna pour my caramel. I want one and a half cups. And I'm gonna reserve one third of a cup for our topping to drizzle on. We have completely blind baked this, fully baked this crust. I removed the pie weights, I baked it another six to eight minutes, and then I let it cool down, and this is what we have. You should have about two tablespoons of caramel left, and I'm going to put them in the bottom of our tart crust. And as you can see, our caramel, it's only been sitting about five or so minutes, and it's already thickening. So I'm just going to spread this in an even layer. We're making the chocolate caramel ganache, which is the filling for our tart. I melted 10 ounces of dark chocolate in the top of a water bath. And what I did was I chopped up my chocolate really fine, which just helped it to melt a little bit more easily. To make this recipe, I'm gonna add three large eggs to the bowl of my stand mixer. I'm gonna whisk these eggs on low for two minutes. Come on, egg yolk. <laughs> it's like fighting for it. This might be a fresh egg. I'm gonna increase the speed to medium and go for about two more minutes. I want my eggs to get foamy. Our eggs are foamy, so I'm gonna reduce the speed to low and I'm going to rest my hot caramel along the lip of the bowl because I don't want that hot caramel to splatter. I'm gonna slowly drizzle it in. And now that it's drizzled in, I'm gonna increase the speed, go to medium, increase a little more. I'm gonna go to medium high and I'm gonna whisk this for about four to five minutes. So this is looking really smooth and beautiful. So I'm reducing the heat. I don't have to turn it off to drizzle in my melted chocolate. I'm just gonna put it on the lowest setting. And my chocolates, oh, come on. What is better than melted chocolate? I don't know. I love it, I'm mesmerized. I'm just gonna drizzle in my melted chocolate with it going on low, oh yeah. I mean, I said this was a chocolate caramel ganache. It's literally chocolate, caramel, and eggs. Now it's not a bad time to taste it. Woo, that is so good. Oh, oh my gosh. It's like the deeper you cook the caramel in this recipe, you're just getting more of those really complex, beautiful flavors. This ganache, it will start to set immediately. So you wanna go ahead, get it out of your bowl, and pour it right into the tart pan. So I poured my chocolate ganache in and I'm gonna go ahead and that caramel that we reserved, I put it in a piping bag. I'm just going to go ahead and add my caramel. I piped the caramel on in vertical lines. And now I'm just gonna use a butter knife and kind of drag a design going in opposite directions. I'm gonna just sprinkle on a little bit of flaky sea salt, and I'm gonna let this set at room temperature for an hour, and then I'm gonna finish it in the refrigerator for two to three hours. Now it's time to eat. We used a removable bottom tart pan. I'm just gonna place my tart right here. And this tart is like very rich. good. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. Decadent, fudgy, chocolatey, caramelly, chocolate caramel tart. Oh my god. This is so unbelievably luxurious. And let's see if it looks like the picture. I think we did a great job. If you guys had fun watching this video, hit that like button and be sure to also hit subscribe. We have so much more to bake together and I can't wait to see you next time.